Hello, Shane Glister, Application Specialist with Finning. I'd like to go over the two different 50 ton offerings from Caterpillar. We have a 350 with a 9.3 liter engine. Great machine. They both have the exact same footprint on the ground. The 352 is a direct replacement for the 349 that you know and love. C13 engine. It's an absolute brute. They have all the same technology features that all the next gen hex have had. E-fence, assist, payload. There's no difference between the 350 and the 352 technology wise. I'd like to spend some time in the cab with you and go over some features that may be easily overlooked. So this is our new next gen cab. It offers a little bit better um, comfort than previous machines. We on the F-Series weren't able to use the back window for egress. We've got a quite a bit larger back window and it is also a secondary escape if necessary. We have a heated seat with a ton of adjustability. You can slide the seat independent of the joysticks. You can slide the whole thing, air it up or down here. Seat pan, seat tilt controls. There's nobody that can't get comfortable in here. If you lift the armrest, it gives you a little bit more room to get in and out of the cab. And then the armrests themselves are infinitely adjustable on both sides. There's also this window on the top. Cover if you get too much sunlight through it. And a pull down shade blocks some of that light because we always find ourselves working into the sun in the morning. Cup holder, jog dial, all of the buttons and switches have been moved from back here. Radio controls, uh, engine speed dial. There's nothing that the operator needs that's past his elbow. In the past, you had to reach way back around to hit functions. We have a USB charging port here, a 12 volt charging port, and then vents arranged all over to help defrost the cab in the winter. Seat heat, and a very large storage area behind the seat for a lunch kit. The uh, monitor will let you activate grade control, enter passcodes, set up users. We have payload, e-fence. You can access it by directly touching the monitor or this jog dial. Depends on your preference. If you're sitting back in the seat, sometimes it's more comfortable as well. The default display of the monitor. It's very easy to use. This bottom left corner is apps and this is list. If you push the apps, it's going to break everything down into apps. So it's very easy to navigate. Works very much like a modern cell phone or tablet where apps specifically, if you swipe, and then this list button will give you a list of options pertaining to the screen you're on. If I'm in the grade control, the list is going to break down the grade control options. If I'm in payload, likewise, list is the place to go for those specific functions. Defense and assist, the list is going to change context sensitive to what we're looking at. Nice feature of this machine from the next gen hex is offer dynamic lift chart. So if you turn on lift assist, you're going to see a dynamic lift chart rated capacity of where the linkage is, the actual payload out on the end. As you reach over the side, these bars will turn yellow and red indicating that you're getting close to your max capacity. And it will also adjust if you remove the bucket, it'll, you can pick up that extra capacity. Makes it easy for young operators to get a handle on it quickly. Even experienced folks probably use a cell phone today, so a lot of similarities and pal parallels there in how to navigate the screen. It also does have an OMM built right into the monitor. The nice thing about these is they can be updated as new features come out and they make changes. We can push down the new monitor OMM to the machine. So instead of republishing the book, this will always be up to date. Don't be afraid to poke around in the monitor. There's not much that you can harm. The joystick switches are all pretty much configurable with the exception of the horn. Um, I'm going to show you how to set up an operator profile. 
to be able to get the most out of it. I just want to show you how to set up an operator profile. So if you're logged in as a master, you can go to manage operator here. I've got underground truckload. If I want a different application, I can dictate the access level here. And then I can either put my, my name or the application. So then I'll put a key code. So that's just gonna let me quickly and easily cycle through different applications. Once I hit apply, that's gonna give me the default control scheme. Also, if you've made changes to your settings, they're going to save to that profile. So from the home menu, if I want to change to my new, I will enter my new code, 3333. It's going to usually say invalid passcode the very first time. Enter it again, and it's going to load up that new profile. So now we've got the load profile. If I hit my six key, it's going to show just the factory default settings. Any changes I make in this profile now are going to save to it. So I'm going to show you how to assign functions to a specific joystick switch. If I go into my operator setting, whatever profile I have loaded up, it's going to make the changes to. So if I select left joystick, I can select one of these unassigned function switches and attach a function to it. So if you're for instance, in the truck loading application, I've got a lot of payload focused features. Here's some general features. Um, from the top here, you can have work tool select if you're changing work tools often. These are gonna prevent multiple button presses. So you have buttons on demand, functions on demand. One touch low idle was a feature we offered in the F series. You can assign a button to that, answer your phone does have Bluetooth, so if you use the phone quite often. 360 visibility is one that I like to put on a button. So with one push of the six key here, it's showing that assigned button there now. So if I just push it once, it's gonna load up the 360 cameras. One of the great new features of all of our next gen hex, 350 or 352 both have joystick steering. To enable joystick steering, just one press of this top button here on the left joystick. You're going to see this little symbol up there telling you that it's active. And then this is the left joystick control, fore, aft, steer left and right. Then the thumb wheels on the joysticks are going to activate the swing. Now that it's been activated, you can jump back and forth between joystick steering with one press of the button.